Hey guys, so today we're gonna be doing a little revamp on the rooftop tent. We had some obvious things happen to the clear coat. Uh, so we're gonna go through that a little step-by-step, -step, just a little quick video, um, just to kind of share the process and what we're gonna do to it um, in order to repaint it and show you what we're gonna repaint it with. Should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. Stick around, you don't wanna miss this. Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to another in shop, fab shop, in depth, no in depth, never lost adventures little uh, video. Yeah, so this should be a lot of fun. Today we are going to paint our rooftop tent with this Rust Oleum hammered paint. We have a friend who sprayed his tent with Rhino Line. I love the look. He doesn't as okay. much. So we thought we would go with a nice happy medium and just get a really good coat of a nice hard paint on there. No, it's not like implement paint or, you know, some two part epoxy or anything crazy like that. But we really like the look of this hammered paint. So we're going to go a little on the edge and we're going to roll it on. So this could either look great or look terrible. And we'll leave it up to you guys to let us know what you think. <laughs> yeah, we have all the capabilities to spray it, um, but it was super hot day and we just kind of want to get it done which is also a hard mentality for us because it's like either buy once, cry once, do it do it the right way the first time so we don't have to do it again, but we are going to take the risk of one, using this paint, which one, this should be totally solid. I've done should research. Yeah, we wanted to do a two-part polyurethane, uh, super strong, durable, but this should be strong enough. And then we're gonna take a little bit lazy way out and we're gonna go ahead and roll it on. I just um, didn't want to set up the cup gun. No, yeah, it's that's too a hot work. here. It's California. It's June. Yeah, setting up the uh, the whole like a mobile booth in our back our backyard would just be kind of a pain. So one thing we are going to make sure that we do is we're going to get the clear coat off. We're going to do a solid sand with with the sixty grit. Should have got some, uh, like forty grit or thirty grit to make the job a little faster. It'll be um, fine. But it's not a car. It's a rooftop tent. It's going to get scratched up anyways. So we are looking for that rough look. I mean, if we were gonna do a Rhino line uh, top anyways, uh, just like our friends, it would be super rough anyways. So like you said, we're gonna go down that medium road and we are really dancing around like, what color should we use? Should we use a darker gray, a charcoal or all black? You want it all black. I was like, ah, let's just be a little different. So we saw this, the hammered look, it's not pure black, but it gives it that little bit of uh, well, one, texture look, but two... It looks like cast iron. Yeah, a little bit different color. So hopefully it is a little bit different. The bit, the most important thing that I want is to stick, adhere, and to be tough. Mm -hmm. That's all I really care yeah. about. The other stuff is, you know, it's a good thing if it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. So yes. anyways. So if you are trying to attempt something like this at home, please remember with anything paint related, your top coat will only ever be as good as your base coat. And your prep is just as important with how you get the paint on at the end of the day. So be sure you're sanding everything off and then please wipe it down. Yeah. No, this is not a car. We don't want it to be perfect. Obviously this is bumpy paint, but we're going to take the time. We're going to sand it down, wipe it down with some tack cloth before we actually get this on there yes. with a roller. Yeah. So it should be fun. It should be good. I'm excited. And if it only lasts six months, well, then we'll fully take it apart and we'll do it the right way and we'll do it the right way. Yeah. So stay tuned, uh, check it out and uh, we'll walk you through the process. To start with, as I said, our base coat needs to be great so that our top coat can be also great. Um, what we need to do to start off with is get all of this bubbly, peely clear coat off. We left it in the sun and this was our own damn fault, but oh, I could do this for hours. This is so satisfying. Anyways, I digress. So we need to peel off the stickers, get this all sanded down. We're gonna pop these off and do some taping here little bit of mask work. We're actually going to remove this seal that runs all the way around the bottom edge of the tent. That way it's just protected. I don't want to get any paint on there and have it mess up the sealability of um, what we've got going on down here. So in a nutshell, we're going to get it all taped up. We're going to sand it down. We're going to wipe it down and then we're going to go from there. So I'm going to open this up. You can see the wonderful thing about Alpha. It just pops right open. 
and I'm going to pass the camera along to Derek. He is going to get a little bit technical. So I really wanted to do this the right way and pull off all the hardware that would make it so much easier to sand and then so much easier to paint. You don't have to mask anything off, nothing is in your way, but the way they built it, some of the hardware you can't get into. At a minimum, the screws are accessible for this plate, uh, this Tough Stuff Overland plate that is really beautiful and we wanna keep that nice. And I mean, four screws, it's easy to pull off. So that we can get to. All the straps and everything else on the outside are difficult. They're behind this aluminum, pla uh, aluminum plastic, this aluminum piece that is also adhered to the fiberglass. So there's just, there is a way to get into it, but I just don't want to ruin the integrity of it. So we're going to figure out how to mask off and paint around the rest of the straps um, and possibly take off the hinges. Uh, again, those are three, three bolts per hinge. So pretty, pretty simple. And uh, so we're going to do our best to pull half off and leave half on and then just tape and mask off around it and paint around it. We'll go from there. all taken apart it's just the fiberglass top uh, we ended up just totally disassembling it uh, took off the struts from the inside uh, un unbolted the hinges and then took that around back so it's out of the way uh, so there still is the insulated material that's on the inside the back side but uh, we should be good we should be good so this will make it a little safer to not safer, but yeah, I guess Well, safer. this way it's not like there's gonna be excessive dust or perhaps even paint, whoops, that might get underneath in some way. I mean, I'm not exactly the most tidy painter in the world. So yeah. I think this was the smart way to do it. Just dismantle the struts, take off those back hinge pins and, or whatever, hinge bolts. And here we are, we're gonna go ahead and start now. Yeah, we're gonna mask off uh, the latches that we have on the sides and, and the handles. And then we'll go ahead and start sanding the fun stuff. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. And that is because we thought we were done sanding. And of course, like we said, you gotta do good prep. So we hit it with the air check to blow it off so it'd be free of dust. And more clear coat started bubbling off of it. So we decided that we would go ahead and just wipe it down with acetone just to see what would happen and kind of a risky move because you never know how plastic is going to react. It could just turn completely white and turn really brittle. But for whatever reason, this is really working. It's taking the clear coat off. We kind of wish we had started off doing this. Now we are at the perfect time to bring you guys up to speed on everything that's happened. We got our masking done. One more wipe down, blew it off really good. And I think we're finally ready to paint. It did take two coats. The paint actually recommends um, Rust-Oleum. They recommend that you have a window of 30 minutes to four hours between your coats. And we ended up, it was about an hour for us because we did lay the paint on pretty thick. 
We just want to have a really good coat, really good adherence, and we wanted it to be nice and dry before we got that second coat on, which was a good thing because as we were going over the paint, the coat number one with coat number two, it was sort of like starting to lift a little bit. So you'd be rolling and you would have like some strings that would like come off the side, like you'll sometimes see with an oil-based paint. But we got it on, the timing was just right, not too warm today, so that didn't like crazy affect it too much. For a minute we did move it into the sun, but it was just too much, so we kept it here. And I think it looks really good. I can't wait to get it all unmasked, get those badges on, and just show you the overall look of it. It's painted, it's done, it's all reassembled, it's ready to be camped in once again. And I'm so excited with the results. I think it looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, it, does. it hardened up really well too. The paint. The paint. Yeah. It looks so good. It has the exact look we were after, which is basically a new cast iron pan. That's yep. what it looks like. Not too black, not too mm -hmm. gray. Tiny little kiss of metallic. And I love it. We Stoked. Now we're uh, debating on whether to put decals on there, which that'll be coming up. I bought some kind of like generic, you know, compass type decals to get an idea before we go all out and uh, spend a lot of money and get like true decals, 3M or wraps or whatever. So we're thinking about putting stuff on there. Uh, also, guys, the other reason that why, why we went with a smoother um, texture is because we're most likely needed to do, we need to get out and go camping, uh, but we want to do one of the stick on solar panels. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, if it's stick on, it's not going to really stick to, you know, something that has a lot of texture. Um, but this is pretty smooth. Mosquito. <laughs> this is pretty smooth, even though it has the hammered look. So it should be uh, all good. And yeah, it does look pretty bitchin'. It looks great. So, I haven't seen happy. a single tent out there that looks like this one. Yes. So you'll see us coming, that's for sure. Yeah. And let's just hope and pray that it sticks. We did a lot of, a lot of sanding, a lot of prepping, but it should be so good. So much prep. Even yeah. he was like, we should have done one more sand. And I was like, no. Yes, we should have. No. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if I corrected this earlier, but it is plastic. It's all plastic. None of it is fiberglass. Mm -mm. It's formed plastic. So I thought there was fiberglass in between or on the yeah. backside. And after like tweaking with it and moving no. it, I'm glad it's not fiberglass yeah. because it would have easily cracked. So go tough stuff with the yes. all plastic. Don't know how the other tents are made, all, you know, hard shell. I think some They're of them- They're probably vacuum formed. Yeah. This is vacuum formed plastic. There you go, thank you. Yeah, it's really cool. Great process. If Smart you ever want to go down a YouTube rabbit hole, Yeah. vacuum forming, satisfying. Anyways, guys, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you made it all, all through the video. It's super great. Uh, we're going to get out on some trails and we're going to get some landscape. Thanks for holding on. Uh, the, the fabrication stuff is great. It's super fun. Um, it's, and it's kind of a slog it, though. But, we can't uh, wait to be through the fab so that yeah. we can hit the trail. At least through a small bit of fab. There's yeah. always going to be fab work. So. Fab is fab. It's going to be fabulous. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Go ahead and comment if you guys have any questions. And, you know, if you follow us. We are open, open book. I'll tell you everything we did, didn't do, like, don't like, blah, blah, blah. We'll go from there. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Coming on the inside of the tent. Uh... Please re-say that. just tripped on Ace and I couldn't stop thinking about coming on the inside. <laughs>